This is a bonus video for my Patreon subscribers. So I just want to talk more about how to parse the command line. So I did the video about how to parse the command line in C. Uh, and I wanted to show uh, another way to parse the command line. Uh, so just to kind of remind ourselves where we were. So uh, I had uh, written in that video uh, just a simple program, uh, which was uh, hello. And uh, hello would uh, return the command line options that you give it. I didn't give it any command line options here, so there's nothing to return. Uh, and so you might type something like hello uh, one, two, three, four, and that'll return the uh, command line options one, two, three, four. Uh, you also could, uh, uh, might pass it uh, very simple command line options like uh, hello uh, slash q or slash h or slash question, and your command line program would be able to parse those by just by looking through uh, the argument vector, the argv. Um, and if you remember, we also modified this uh, so that uh, when we did uh, i2 hello, uh, so you could actually use Unix style options. Uh, and we had uh, hyphen q uh, would generate the word quick. Uh, I2 hello uh, hyphen H would generate the word hello. Uh, and actually, if you remember, I2 hello uh, was actually able to parse uppercase and lowercase just because we gave it these different options on the command line. So uh, dash Q dash uppercase Q will generate the word quick uh, both times because we recognize both uppercase and lowercase. Uh, and so that's using uh, uh, the Unix style command line options. And that's using a, a, a library called getopt, which is uh, really borrowed from uh, Unix, and that's why it's available in the uh, uh, the IA16 version of GCC. There's also another library that I wrote uh, a long time ago called getopt long. It's actually a uh, a version of the uh, GNU getopt long. If you go to uh, iBiblio, and there's a link uh, in the video description, uh, you can find getopt. Uh, 1.2 or getopt12.zip. Uh, if I just do an unzip uh, dash l just to show a list of getopt12, uh, uh, you can see it's got these files in it. So I go into uh, the uh, getopt underscore l, and that's where I've got my uh, getopt uh, long implementation. Uh, and so let's let's go ahead and uh, uh, look at how do you use it. So um, let's look at uh, let me first bring up an editor real quick. Just a just a blank file here. Um, when you call get opt long, uh, you're going to uh, give it a couple of extra options that you didn't use in get opt. Uh, get opt. Uh, would normally look for uh, argc, argv, and then some short list of uh, single letters that uh, that that uh, represent those those uh, Unix style command line uh, letters. And you actually uh, might use uppercase and lowercase. That's how I did it in the other video. Get up long. Um, allows you to uh, expand on that. And it expands on it in a great way. So uh, before, getopt is just doing uh, Unix style command line options, hyphen Q, hyphen H. Uh, but what if you wanted to have uh, command line options like the word help uh, or the word uh, verbose? So that your command line option actually might go into verbose mode. Uh, or it might take uh, options like uh, extra, and you might need to uh, read parameters from that, like, I don't know, we'll just say A. Um, and then what if those needed to be uppercase and lowercase? So that's that's what getoplong really does for you. Getoplong uh, supports uh, short letters and long letters, or long uh, uh, option words, and uh, it, it uses this type of uh, calling syntax. So getopt, uh long is going to use uh, argc and argv, and it's going to use a list of uh, letters. Uh, so you might use, for example, um, h, v, x, and because x takes uh, an option, because that's the extra, uh, because that takes an option, uh, you would actually put a colon after it. That's, that's standard get op syntax that I, I don't think I covered in the other video. Uh, you're also going to pass it a couple of other options. Uh, you're going to pass it 
um, a, a list of long options and you're going to pass it uh, a, uh, an address to uh, an option index, which is really uh, a long index. Uh, I'll tell you right now, uh, get up long, the one I implemented, doesn't actually uh, support option index. Um, so you have to have it in there because it expects the calling syntax and because I'm borrowing from uh, the, the calling syntax of GNU get opt, uh, which uses it, but this one doesn't actually uh, return that value. So uh, what that option index does is uh, if you have a long option that gets detected, uh, it will uh, return an index to the long options uh, through the that integer variable of, of option index. Uh, now, uh, long options uh, ends up being a, uh, a structure, and so you need to define in your code, uh, and we'll look at this in a second, but you'll see it as uh, defined as a, uh, a static uh, structure, struct, um, and we're going to call it uh, option. Uh, actually, it needs to. Uh, it's it's the struct type is option, uh, and then we're going to give it uh, long options. And so you need to have that uh, declaration in your code. And usually, what you'll do is you'll just say, "Look, this is going to be a list of things anyway." So I'm going to go ahead and uh, make it a list. Um, and uh, then you need to define your list inside that. So you're going to have a list that looks like uh, you're going to have. Uh, uh, because it's a structure, you'll have many elements in the structure. Uh, you're going to have the long name that you're going to use. Uh, and so you use uh, uh, help in this case. Uh, you're going to give it another option that says uh, if it has an argument, uh, this is going to be zero or one, indicating whether or not it takes an, uh, an uh, and the option itself takes an argument. So you'll notice that uh, up here when I, was, when I was typing the examples, uh, help and verbose did not take options, but extra does. And so uh, when we define help, uh, we put in a, z a zero for uh, if it has options or not. Um, now, get up long, my implementation did not actually implement uh, this next option, which is a flag. So I'll just always put in zero for that. Uh, and then you need to put in the uh, single character short name representing that long option. And so you might use uh, H or, or capital H, but here I'm just going to use a lowercase h. Uh, and then uh, that's the end of that uh, entry in that list. And uh, you put in a comma, and then you start your next item over here, which would be um, verbose, um, doesn't take an option, uh, the, uh, the flag is not used, and uh, it'd be uh, V is the uh, single letter option. And then we would have uh, extra as the other long option. This one does take an option, so an argument to that option, so we're going to put in a one in that case. Uh, but again, uh, flag is not used, so we're just going to put in a zero for that. And then uh, the short letter for that, single letter for that might be X. And uh, that's where you uh, mark that as uh, the uh, the end of that list, uh, but to actually tell uh, the library that's the end of the list, you actually need to have one more entry in there, which has to be filled full of zeros. And then that's your uh, structure that you've defined uh, for a static struct. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and look at, let me just go, bring it up in the editor here, file, open, uh, and then uh, foo.c is a uh, demo program that comes with uh, get up long as sort of a demonstration. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and bring up foo.c and uh, why can't I load foo.c? There we go. Um, yeah, I'll go and expand it. Tab with it. There's a whole bunch of uh, comments up above here about the license because I wanted this to be uh, free software. But uh, let me jump down here. You can see uh, here's where we have the, uh, that's where we define our option index. Uh, that's the one that's not actually used, but you need to have it in there anyway. And then here's the uh, static struct option. Uh, and we call it long options. And that's pretty much what I wrote before, uh, except in what I wrote before, I had uh, uppercase help, verbose, and extra. Here I've, I've typed it as lowercase. I don't think it really matters. Uh, and then uh, uh, before, when we were typing the uh, way to parse your command line option, we used a while loop. And uh, we had this way of plugging in 
uh, the results of the get opt function and it we were only passing it argc, argv, and then a uh, string that represented the uh, Unix style options. Uh, that exists as before. And then what we're doing here is we're adding um, the, oops, the, uh, the long options and option index. And as long as uh, that doesn't return an end of file marker, then we know that we uh, have options to parse. Uh, and so what it's doing is uh, whenever getOpLong uh, finds a long option, it's going to return the value uh, of the uh, short letter option. And so that's why up here, uh, for example, help verbose and extra, uh, if it detects the uh, long option of slash help, it's going to return a single letter H. If it detects the long option of slash verbose, it's going to return the single letter V. Uh, if it detects the long option of slash extra, it's going to return the single letter of X. Uh, and it's going to then store the, uh, by the way, because it's, it, if it detects the uh, uh, long option extra, that takes a, uh, an extra option with it, uh, and that'll get stored uh, over here in... Uh, opt arg, and that's a, an extra option that or variable that gets uh, stores the uh, the return. So you can uh, look through foo.c as a uh, as a way to kind of understand how get opt long works. Uh, but that's a pretty good introduction for uh, what it does. Uh, here you can see in the demo, uh, it uh, it obviously then is uh, parsing the command line uh, using that switch statement, same as we did in a regular get opt. Uh, if it detects the uh, X uh, option up here, it's going to just uh, tell you uh, what was the uh, opt arg, the, the optional argument that got passed to it. Uh, down here, if it detects uh, the uh, H, which is help, it's just going to tell you that it's it's going to, you might print a help screen, for example, when you uh, run the command, well, run the command program. Uh, if someone has asked for help, then you probably would just print help, then exit. Uh, and if it detects the slash V, well, that might put your program into verbose mode. Uh, if it doesn't uh, recognize what comes back, obviously it's going to just tell you, I don't understand what's coming back to me. Um, and uh, when it's done, by the way, it's going to uh, print out uh, everything that follows the command line uh, options. So uh, opt-end is less than uh, argc. Opt-end, if you remember, was uh, kind of where we left off on the command line after it was done parsing options. Uh, and uh, so as long as that's less than the argument count, it's going to just print out the rest of them. And that's what happens here. So you're going to see non-option argv elements, and it's going to tell you what they are. So if I exit here, um, I don't need to save that. Um, so let's go ahead and compile uh, this. So I'm going to just run the uh, Watcom C compiler on getOptL.c, uh, uh, and that'll compile it to a .obj file. And then I'm going to do the Watcom C compiler and linker on uh, foo.c and getOptL.obj. And there it goes, runs the compiler, and it's now created a uh, DOS executable called foo. Uh, and so now I can uh, do just what I, I, I said. I can do uh, foo, oops, uh, foo slash help, and that'll give me the option of it'll, this is where it would print help. That can be uppercase or lowercase, foo slash help, uh, foo slash a mixed case. Right, it's it's case insensitive at that point. Also, uh, the the single letter for that was uh, slash h. A better one might be slash question mark, but here I used h. Uh, and again, uh, foo slash uh, verbose. Uh, that's case sensitive as well. Foo slash verbose. Mixed case there, and there it is. Uh, and then the other one was the extra option. So uh, foo. Uh, slash uh, 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 extra uh, equals, well, let's give it A, that was the value. And there we go, it's found the X option and it's stored the option of uh, A. Uh, again, the short letter for that was X equals A and does the same thing. And then uh, obviously if I do uh, foo oops, slash uh, verbose slash help, slash x equals, 
I don't know, one, uh, then I might have other options here, right? So other options follow, right? And there we go. It's now uh, detected uh, verbose mode with the slash verbose. Uh, it would have printed help uh, and probably would have exited, but uh, here it's just uh, parsing the command line. Uh, it uh, found the extra option and stored the value of one. And then after those uh, command line options, it had other options follow. And so those might be the names of files that you might give it. So uh, just a, a quick introduction to uh, using getopt long on, uh, on FreeDOS. That's a, a, a library that I wrote long ago. Uh, I looked at the code. I kind of remember writing it. Uh, it's, not, it's not too long. So it actually is something, if you want to see how to parse the command line as a library, that's, that's probably a good example to go look at. But I wrote that one long ago. So I probably would like to write it differently today. Uh, so uh, in case I post this on the uh, YouTube later, I'll go ahead and do the outro. So uh, visit our website at freedos.org. Uh, join us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. And consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you.